It's Monday, possibly in for a big week. Today we're going to be talking about stocking your best trading setups. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Wintry, blustery morning in Perth. We've got three or four days of winter storms ahead of us. Stormy weekend, lots of time to just reflect, look at the charts, study what we did well last week or what I did well, what I could have done better, where I maybe had missed some opportunities, how I could have stocked those trades better, and some of the trades that went according to plan, and how this week we can stock the best trade setups going forward. There's going to be some fantastic opportunities. We're going to go over some charts and look at what's setting up for this week. But I want to just talk about my perspective. I received a lot of questions and emails. And again, thank you for such uh, fantastic feedback. I hope people are getting value. Everything I'm trying to share with you is, is relevant every single day in the market. But one of the biggest challenges that I had to overcome with my own trading was stepping back each day and, and starting to identify the best setups. And sometimes you can only start to develop that in terms of what, what I resonated best with. When you're reviewing constantly and going back in terms of how you could track those in live time, which is how the 12 candle window evolved, and then understanding even each hour, how the hour trades in that 12 candle window, how it can be a stop hunt, how it can be an open drive uh, at the beginning of a market session, how if Asia sets a high and a low and London extends it out, that, that the US will probably reverse that unless we're already in a Wednesday or Thursday trending market. But at the beginning of the week, Typically, we're going to see some peak formation setups Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. We're going to start to see the range evolve over the week, and that can help us stock some of the best risk reward opportunities as the week evolves. So, just to sort of come back and remember, my approach to the market is that I'm not trying to catch every 50 pip move in the market. What I'm looking for are the trade setups that when the market has locked in a low or locked in a high, and they're gonna shift the market, whether that's with the trend or with a counter trend trade, at the timings with an engulfment or pin hammer after they've squashed them in down low or squashed them in up top, or if it's a breakout pullback continuation, I wanna be able to scale those trades up. One trade at 10 times the size, not 10 trades with the one little lot all the time trying to scalp pips. I would rather get 50 pips in a month, having built that up over time, knowing exactly what I'm looking for, and keep scaling up my size, rather than trying to scalp pips every week and never really ever get to size. Because my, my objective is to get these trades up to a level that's significant enough, and when they show up, and I know there's a very high possibility that again, I've got a one bar stop and maybe five or in some cases at the low of the week or the high of the week, a 10 to one or greater trade opportunity. So again, just to review, our 12 candle window is between eight and 11 p.m., two to 5 a.m., eight to 11 a.m., New York Eastern Standard Time. So we talk about structure and this, this to me is where the structure starts setting up. We open up inside of Thursday, Friday, Friday, Monday, whatever that may be, but we're inside of a high and a low from either last week's upper part of their template or their lower part of their template. And in some cases, we could be in the middle of a range. And that being the case, then we already have a high and low in place. That high and low, remember, if we're inside, there's liquidity above and below. And if we're getting caught in the chop inside, there's a high probability at that, that those are largely 50-50 opportunities because the market will tend to expand that range and widen it out, hitting stops on both sides. So in a lot of cases, we want to wait for the high and the low of the day to be established as we start the week. So we've got our structural high and lows, and then we've got our highs and lows of the day, which can evolve and expand as Asia and London starts trading. Sometimes they might move the market up 50 pips and we'll get a high of the day sell-off. 
They might drop it down 50 pips or 75 and we'll get a low of the day setup in the 12 candle window of that Europe London session. But if the market just starts to expand out in London, either side, they might expand it out, come down and hit the low, or they may work one side for a reversal trade at the high of the week because on Monday the high is the high of the week. We may get a reversal formation. They can do the same with the low of the week. But we may also extend the range on a previous day's high or low. And that's what's important as well because that, that range extension could take us again 25 to 50 pips further outside. That's the average stop hunt before the market gives us some kind of reversal situation. That may be in the Europe London window as we saw on Friday on the pound yen, the pound. Or they may bring it down for a stop hunt back up and then a reversal in the US session for a measured move expanding the range on a Monday setting up possibly a range extension on Tuesday or a pullback and a, and a trade back up towards Monday's high where we now have a new high and a low trading set for our structure for the new week. Timings are essential and again most of these trades will all come off of round numbers we're going to go and look at some examples as the markets are setting up today, but the round numbers and the timings are critical because, again, when once the high and the low are established, we can start in our head, start to ascertain are they setting up just a normal high and low or are they extending the range? Have we gone more than 25 or 50 pips from high to low as London is open, opening up? If London extends the range, are we, have they put any middle structures in for, for peak formation reversals or are we just looking at a market that's potentially trending? And remember the three things that markets do and this is where our structure and our high and lows of the day come into play as the day evolves. They break out, they pull back and they trend. So that breakout pullback will often see a stop hunt into the move for a continuation trade setup. So that stop hunt may come in that second hour or even in the first hour if the market has already broken out. So we could see a breakout as we did last Tuesday on some of the pairs. The market reversed, it broke through the high of the day, continued that move into the end of the Asian hour before doing a one, two, three back into the trend and then when London opened up it gave us a two bar reversal engulfment at the beginning of the London session for a measured move continuation. Breakout pullback, a false break reversal. We'll often see a stop hunt in a 1-2-3 style setup with an engulfment reversal. We can see this after the market has shifted 50 pips or we may just see this as the market expands the range heading into that Europe London window. Typically when we see the false break reversals they can be a trap on the first move and the reversal on the stop hunt on the opposite side can often initiate the trade and the gain. These 12 candle window, the hourly rotation is a very good indication if we're up high or down low, when these timings are taking place at the end of the hour or the beginning of the hour for the possible trend to now be taking place. And the third option is a trading range. We could just be in a sideways market where the market is trading, could be giving us a double top off the off the high of the day or a double bottom or it may just be a stop into the high and a stop into the low but at some point if the market starts to expand that range especially in that 50 pip area we may see a consolidation setting up at the timings for a reversal with an engulfment or a pin hammer we'll often see three pushes exhaust a move so the market if it's extending out or if it's uh, initiating a trade will go in three pushes and often again it will coincide with our timings. If the market has been trading in London as we saw in the pound Aussie, pound New Zealand on Friday, sell off one push, two pushes, three pushes into the third hour before consolidating and engulfing a reversal but trading sideways into the US Open, pin hammer, second pin hammer at the second hour into the trader who's right for a 50 pip move through the high of the day and the high of the week. So just on that, if we're trading long, we'll often get a low of the day trade 
that takes out the high of the week. And we'll often get a high of the day trade that takes out the low of the week. So if the market is going to continue long, we'll see the market stop hunt low after it can, it can trigger a breakout, stop hunt low, and give us a trade setup for a low of the day trade setup back towards the high of the week. In the same situation, we could get a, a breakout trade that triggers early bears or early, early bulls into the market before coming back and stop hunting the existing HOD before resuming the move for a measured move through the low of the week, which today will be the low of the day and the low of the week or the high of the day and the high of the week because it's Monday. But if we're in a larger structure, again, we can see a measured move through the high of Friday or Thursday uh, or a move back towards the extreme anchor point high or low. Engulfments and pin hammers. So again, remember stop hunt, trap, trade, high of the week, low of the week. As this range expands, at some point the market may work one side for a reversal or a breakout pullback continuation. Same thing on the downside. As we expand the range, not only for Asia, but for, for London and into the US session, we could end up down low for a US reversal or we could pull back in London for a, a, a measured move, or we may just see a market that gradually expands the range until they work one side and, and take out the previous day's high or low for a, for a continuation, uh, a breakout pullback continuation trend, or a reversal for the stop hunt to the opposite side. So let's take a some look at some examples and some couple of pairs that have already started to establish a possible uh, high probability opportunity. Keep it simple traders, stay disciplined, stay focused. Remember the big structure as it evolves throughout Monday, Tuesday. We could have some very big opportunities coming up. And if you haven't done so, go to my blog, stacyburktrading.com. Download your free audio file, the seven step daily routine for high performance traders. Build your own daily routines and rituals that will help bulletproof you for developing the confidence and discipline and the winning mindset to master the markets. Thanks again for hitting the like button. It helps the algorithms trigger more, more people watching these videos. And again, 12 candle window, keep it simple. There's gonna be some fantastic opportunities. Have a great trading session and may the markets go with you. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Just continuing our discussion on stocking our best trade setups or my best trade setups. One of the things uh, looking for, obviously, as the week begins, is the bigger structural picture. And just starting off with the British pound, we can see that again. I look at everything either being inside or outside. And if I'm inside, I have to be concerned that uh, potentially the market is chopping, building up orders inside for an eventual move to the outside. So as the market is trading through Asia, we can identify levels where the market has turned and given us peak formations, which are significant because they will obviously have stops above those areas. And we head into our end of our Asian window towards our last hour and a half roughly of the Asian window. We can see the market has broken through the lower rectangle at the beginning of the Asian 12 candle window after our one, two, three down, breaking back up and heading in one push, two push, three pushes into the peak, hitting traders uh, possibly who are at break even at the end of the US session, 12 candle window, but we have obviously stops above, we have stops below the low of the day. Now, the way that I look at this is when London opens up, we're gonna have a couple scenarios. We're going to either have a retest of these highs and possibly get an extended M formation for a retest. We're 25 pips from the beginning of that first candle of the Asian session. And we certainly have room down towards Friday's U.S. session longs and the London longs. Uh, but again, this market has already worked the high. And depending on how London, Europe, London opens up, we could extend that or hit the high again hitting stops and retesting the low of the day. So I'm looking at the bigger structure here is a larger rectangle where we have a 50 pip box possibly from 50 down to double zero. 
And again, possibly further than that, if we bring this chart tighter, we can see that this market has started its run down at last week's low. And it's possible as we retest these highs, we could be getting a middle structure and put in place for a move back down either maybe a Monday, Tuesday through Friday's low. But currently we've started to work the high on a third push, one push, two pushes. And now as we head in towards the end of Asia, so again, looking at structure, but wanting to work from the high of the day, unless this market breaks through the highs for a breakout pullback continuation. Looking at the Euro just for something different again, same situation, we, we saw the market work down from a peak formation on Thursday and put a peak formation low in on Friday, taking out the high of the day before heading into the year, uh, sorry, the US session with a stop hunt and then a, a continuation of that breakout pullback. This market uh, has opened up between Friday's range and Thursday's peak formation US session high as well as the high of the week. And currently, this market has started to trade higher in Asia. And we've taken out the high of the US session for possibly a breakout pullback continuation. But this market, again, as we head into the Europe-London window, could continue this move for a stop hunt back into the trend and a continuation, or put peaks in place for a retest of the low of the day. So our bigger structure, we're currently inside. Our low of the day is down at the 1300 level. Our high of the day is 1330, but again, we're inside of that US session high and we've taken out last Friday's high. So if the range extends out, what I would look at and say to myself is that Asia has currently put a low of the day in place and London may put a high of the day in place, which means that they may work the high for a US session sell or they may pull it back inside. And if the US session opens up inside, I would wait until they either break out again or hit the high or come back and hit the low. Euro yen, we can see again a very similar setup. We have a peak formation from Thursday. Up top, this market put a peak formation low in on Friday after hitting the stop, the stops on Wednesday's lows, and then pulling back, and again breakout pullback continuation, taking out the high of Friday, and then breaking through that high in the last hour, possibly towards the U.S. session swing highs. We may see this market continue to trend, heading back towards the anchor point highs on Thursday. At this stage, the market has continued to extend the range. And unless this market was to start working the high and reverse and engulf in the London session, I would look for a continuation stop hunt back into the trend and a continuation back up towards the high of Thursday. Pound Aussie, again, just looking, we see a market that's been continuing to make new highs. We did see a one push, two push, one, two, three on Friday session before pulling back. We possibly have a middle structure now in place from the rollover this uh, this morning. And again, if this market was to continue to work lower and give us possibly a type 3M formation, this market uh, has the potential to possibly do a measured move or take out the low and work the low in the London session for a reversal or a pullback and a continuation down in the US session. If this market was to break down and continue to trend, a second full expansion could take us down towards that 80-60 area. Just a reminder, these are just my opinions and uh, these videos are purely for educational purposes only. You should seek professional advice before and having your own individual situation addressed before taking any trades that are potentially not within your criteria or risk parameters. Just looking at the Aussie dollar, another pair that, uh, again, we have an anchor point high from Thursday. If we back up, we've got this upside down template currently in process. We had a peak formation low on Friday. The market has already extended 
and moved up in the Asian session today, moving up towards the U.S. sessions uh, shorts on Thursday. Took out the high of Friday and the uh, swing high from Thursday. So we possibly have, if this market was to continue, we could possibly see a measured move take place. Uh, if it was to head towards the high of Thursday, a full expansion would take us up above that 7,000 level. So a very interesting uh, possibility setting up here. We can get a stop hunt down for a continuation. And another interesting opportunity uh, possibly setting up is the U.S. Canadian. We have a middle structure in place after a, a big squeeze and move long hitting the stops at the high of the week on Friday for pulling back on the uh, news in the U.S. session on the Canadian unemployment. Stop hunting high and then dropping down into the close. And this morning in Asia, we've just now broken through this. So the market could continue to fall and we may get a buy low setup in London or a pullback stop hunt into the range in a continuation back down and possibly see the same in the U.S. session. So obviously if this market was to uh, continue to fall, you could see two scenarios, a measured move possibly of that right shoulder or even the full peak formation, which would take us down around that 3520 level if this market was con to continue. Currently we have broken that middle structure, so uh, it'll be interesting to watch how this plays out in the Europe London Open. So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Again, just stepping back and looking at the bigger structure, not so much worried about catching every swing in the market, but identifying when the market possibly is jamming traders in down low for the for the move back up or down low, similar to the Thursday squeeze. We saw a, a fantastic three-day squeeze on the Canadian into Wednesday's uh, high. Again, one push, two push, three pushes dropping down and then an engulfment in the U.S. session taking out the low of Asia but also a middle structure now for a measured move on that London session low. The market was continued that move in the U.S. session for three full expansions of that range squeezing them in down low on Thursday. Bigger picture, bigger structure, greater asymmetrical risk reward opportunities targeting, you know, instead of just 50 pips, maybe 100 or 150 pip move. Keep it simple, traders. Stay disciplined. Stay focused. Have a great trading session, and may the markets Hi, go Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.